Earth is one of the most unique planets known to humankind. The Earth's atmosphere, magnetic field, and distance from the Sun and other planets in our galaxy are just a few of the elements that make it a perfect place for life to thrive. All around the world, incredibly diverse life forms flourish in equally diverse ecosystems. From the jungles of the Amazon, to the polar ice caps, to the African savanna, and the coral triangle. Welcome to Wild Classroom. My name is Rachel, and today we're headed on a virtual field trip to explore the sights and sounds of the Arctic. On today's trip, we'll learn about some of the plants, animals, and people that make the Arctic such a unique place. Glad you could come along. Let's go! The Arctic is one of the most uniquely beautiful places on Earth. Located on the northernmost part of our planet, Many people generally think of it being just vast expanses of snow and ice, but the Arctic is so much more. Let's take a closer look. A diverse range of species and people live amongst its coastal wetlands, upland tundra, glaciers, mountains, wide rivers, and the sea itself. So, while the Arctic looks and sounds like this, it also looks like this, this, and this. Unsurprisingly, the Arctic region surrounds the Arctic Ocean, which spans an area of 5.4 million square miles. That's 1.5 times as big as the United States. The Arctic Ocean is made up of many bodies of water, including the Barents, Beaufort, Chukchi, East Siberian, Greenland, Kara, Laptev, Lincoln, and White Seas, as well as Baffin Bay and Hudson Bay. The Bering Strait is a superhighway for wildlife such as seals and fish, as well as whales and birds that migrate far distances to feed in its waters. True or false, the United States is part of the Arctic. True, the Arctic stretches into eight different countries, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia, and the United States since the state of Alaska is part of the Arctic as well. While I mentioned that the Arctic is made up of many different types of ecosystems, it's known for being icy for good reason. There are several types of ice found in the Arctic, glaciers, icebergs, and sea ice. Let's call in one of our WWF experts, Elizabeth, to tell us more about these different types of ice and why they're so important. Elizabeth. Hi. Nice to see you all. Where are you joining us from today? I'm standing here right outside of Anchorage, Alaska in front of the Cook Inlet. We were just talking about the ice of the Arctic. Can you tell us a bit more about the different kinds of ice you've seen in the Arctic? Yeah. So there are a few kinds of ice that I've seen. One of them is glaciers and that's ice that forms in these big sheets on land. Then some of that ice sometimes breaks off and falls into the ocean and floats around. And we call that ice icebergs. And then there's the ice like you see behind me, which is sea ice that forms on top of the ocean all on its own. And all of these different kinds of ice are really important for the Arctic ecosystem and for the planet as a whole, in part because it reflects the rays of the sun and helps keep the planet cool. And sea ice is really important for uh, animals like polar bears and ice seals who use it for all sorts of things, including uh, hunting and just having it as their habitat. Wow. Thanks for joining us, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining me. Did you know? Sea ice fuels the entire Arctic ecosystem, since it creates a place for algae to grow under it. Species like Arctic cod eat the algae, then other species eat the cod, and the food web continues up the chain with other species from there. Without sea ice, the algae wouldn't have a place to grow, and it would leave a gap in the food web. Another icy layer that helps support the biodiversity of the Arctic is permafrost. Permafrost is a layer of earth that stays frozen all year long and does not melt. It's important for the Arctic ecosystem because it stores carbon and helps keep the ground watertight. 
Having watertight ground helps to maintain wetlands and lakes across the land that provide habitat for many plants and animals. The Arctic tundra, for example, is made up of low to the ground vegetation, like shrubs, mosses, grasses, and even flowers that can thrive in the cold environment and utilize the abundance of ground moisture from the permafrost layer to help them grow. The Arctic tundra is home to all kinds of Arctic species. Why don't we take a moment to see what kinds of species are out and about across the Arctic? Look, there's a curious Arctic fox. Arctic foxes change the color of their fur depending on the season. They are brown in the summer and turn white in the winter. Do you hear that? It's a herd of caribou migrating to their wintering grounds. Wow, just look at how graceful they are. And here we have mighty brown bears hunting for salmon. Salmon and other ocean-dwelling Arctic fish, such as cod, are important to the Arctic food web. Pacific salmon actually begin their life in freshwater streams, lakes, and rivers, and then migrate to the sea to later return to their original place of birth, using their sense of smell to navigate, to spawn a new generation of salmon. They help enrich terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems with nutrients throughout their life cycle, and play an important role in the lives of many indigenous peoples of the Pacific Rim as a main source of protein, as well as part of their culture. Let's see what you know about other Arctic species. True or false? Polar bears only live in the Arctic. True. The largest bear in the world, the great polar bear, is only found in the Arctic. Polar bears are a top predator in the Arctic food web. They have many adaptations that help them survive in the Arctic. From their wide paws, that can be as big as a dinner plate, that help keep them steady on the ice, and their thick fur and fat that keeps them warm, to their incredible sense of smell, that can detect seals, their primary source of food, beneath as much as three feet of snow and ice. Did you know? Polar bear fur isn't actually white, it's clear. The reflection of the sun is what makes it appear white. For the bird lovers out there, over there you can see an arctic tern. The arctic is home to some of the largest seabird populations in the world, and millions of shorebirds, cranes, passerines, and waterfowl migrate to the arctic to breed every summer, to take advantage of the amount of daylight, to nest and feed on the large quantities of fish and insects, such as mosquitoes. Seabirds are a vital part of marine ecosystems as top predators in the marine food web and valuable indicators of ecosystem health. Wow, they're incredible hunters. Did you hear that? Let's listen again. Just as I thought, it's a herd of walruses. Walruses are generally found where the water is no more than about 260 feet deep. They prefer a habitat with a gravelly bottom and spend about two-thirds of their lives in the water. They use sea ice as a platform for resting above shallow waters between excursions to the bottom of the ocean to feed. Their tusks are used to open up breathing holes in the ice for when they surface for air, to defend themselves, and to help haul themselves out of the water onto ice. The Arctic Ocean is home to a variety of marine life, from tiny plankton and fish to whales such as narwhals, belugas, and bowheads that feed on marine plants and smaller fish. Some whales migrate in and out of the Arctic each year, while others live there year-round. Many marine animals rely on clicks, whistles, songs, and other noises to locate food, raise calves, and find mates for survival. Let's listen for a moment to see if we can hear their songs. True or false? People can't live in the Arctic because it's too cold and there are not enough resources to survive. False. About four million people live in the Arctic and roughly 400,000 of them are indigenous. Indigenous people have lived in the Arctic for thousands of years, but as more people began migrating to the Arctic, these communities were forced to adapt to a series of changes and sometimes that meant not being able to live on their traditional lands. However, in recent years, indigenous people have been working hard to reclaim their land and continue their cultural traditions. 
Indigenous communities are a critical part of stewarding the Arctic. Their knowledge and expertise on the land, the ocean, and everything that connects between them provides important perspectives for how to care for the region. For generations, Indigenous people have survived and thrived in the area by picking greens and berries and hunting for food, clothing, and other essential items needed for survival. During the winter months, living in such a harsh environment makes traveling and road clearing difficult, which changes how people get supplies. In some parts of the Arctic, people rely heavily on small planes, snowmobiles, or snow machines, and even dog sleds to get where they need to go and get day-to-day -day supplies. The Arctic's position near the Earth's pole and the tilt of the Earth's axis causes the Arctic to experience extreme changes in day length during the year as well. In the summer, the sun never sets, and in the winter, it is almost always dark. But in March and September, the length of the days and nights are likely similar to where you live. Arctic people and ecosystems continue to adapt to life in the New North as climate change and other threats create more challenges for us all. The release of greenhouse gases from the burning of fossil fuels and other sources is causing temperatures in the Arctic to warm at three to five times the rate of the rest of the world. This causes sea ice and permafrost melt, which has serious impacts on all the animals that depend on the ice for their survival, as well as the communities of people in the Arctic and all over the world, as the melting ice causes sea levels to rise. Some Arctic communities are dealing with a threat of flooding due to increased erosion from permafrost melt and strong offshore storms developing from the lack of sea ice. Melting sea ice is also opening up more of the ocean, allowing more ships to pass through and more opportunity for resource extraction like offshore oil drilling and more fishing. All of this creates a greater risk for ecosystem disruption. We can already hear the difference in the Arctic Ocean ecosystem. But not all hope is lost for the Arctic and its people and species. There's a lot that we can do every day to help support and protect the Arctic. Be energy conscious. Generating energy for uses like powering our cars and homes is a big contributor to greenhouse gases. Help reduce climate change impacts by being energy conscious. Unplug devices and turn off any lights when you're not using them. Walk, bike, or take public transit when possible instead of using a car. Watch your water use. Energy is also used to bring water from its natural source into your home. Eat sustainably. The process of packing and transporting food also takes a lot of energy. So talk to your grown-ups about how you can support local farmers and try to purchase seafood from sustainable fisheries. Raise awareness of the importance of protecting the ecosystems like the Arctic by writing a letter to your local representatives or starting a club at your school or in your community with your peers. We all need to help protect the Arctic because although it may feel far away for most of us, we all depend on the services it provides. Thanks for joining us today on this virtual trip through the Arctic. What will you do after this field trip to help protect this region? To learn more about the Arctic and how you can help protect it, visit wildclassroom.org. See you later.